Hi guys, I'm Ryan. Here I have an Infiniti Q50. Uh, we're doing a time and chain job. So far I have the rad removed and a bunch of all the coolant parts and everything. And then I'm gonna keep moving and uh, remove the accessories. And then we'll go from there. What happens whenever you're working on cars like this, you're in limited space. So basically with the AC compressor, most normally there's always two bolts in the front, but on this one, there's one in the back. And on this side over here, there's a bolt underneath the turbo on the back of the AC compressor, which is gonna be a struggle to try and get out, but we'll get it eventually. The AC compressor was a fight, but you can get it if you use a three inch extension and a 12 millimeter socket, and you should be able to get it. And then just a flexible head ratchet helps a lot. So we're back under the car now. We gotta take all these 10 mils off on the plastic oil pan. And we need to do that because there is a couple bolts that are holding the timing cover on right at the top. And once we get those out, then we should be able to pull off the timing cover. As you guys saw on the time lapse, I was pulling all the timing cover bolts out. So we should be ready to go soon. So we just dropped the oil pan down here and I wanna point out something that even the diagrams don't really point out too well. In here, at the timing cover, there's a hole here and a hole over here. There's bolts that are in there and if you don't take them out, it'll be really hard to get this cover off. So once you get those off, then you can slowly work the cover all the way around by prying. There's a good spot right up here underneath this fuel line and then another spot on the other fuel line there where you can start to pry it. So we just got the timing cover off here and I just want to let you guys know of some issues that we ran into that you're going to have to deal with. So when pulling it off, this one coolant pipe here will get in your way. If you lift it up, it should be able to just slide right over. And then another big one is these lines. A lot of people say like you have to take them off. But with us, if I just took a pry bar, I lifted it up and pulled it out of the way, I was able to just wiggle it out. And if you take the timing cover and slide it out this side first, then it will be a lot easier for you. And then after this, I'm gonna clean up all the surfaces and then I'm gonna start setting it all in time again because it is pretty loose. Change a did stretch on this one. And then we'll install all new stuff. That is always not too bad. With your timing chains, you always wanna make sure they're laid out the same way how you took them off so you always know how to put it back together. So up here, this would be our left bank. And on them, they are labeled, but sometimes with timing jobs, they aren't. So this one would be our left guide. Yeah, or this one will say right, but in this case, it still says left. <laughs> Very odd, but that's why we lay it out like this. This is showing that it will go on the left bank. And on this one, it should say right and right. So then we know where they go. With our tensioners, you're gonna have to use a simple thumb tack. I know that sounds crazy if you haven't done timing before, but that's just how we lock it out. There's a little clip here slides in and this will hold it in place so it doesn't come out and when you're taking them off you have to you have to push this clip down and then you're able to push it back in this one was broken so i didn't lock it up all right so now we have all the chains removed and ready to go i just want to walk you guys through everything that i had to do and problems that came up and also like tell you about the timing marks and stuff for us to do here uh so whenever we were taking them off I had some issues locking out the cams. So I, what I did was I just grabbed, I grabbed the punch here, or chisel, and then we just fit it right between the cams here because it fits pretty nice. And I was able to hold them just enough so they didn't twist and turn. And then when you're taking them off, you wanna make sure to always have some marks here so you know how they were and how they go back together. For timing here, with your new chains, they'll have orange marks on them, if I can find them. Right here, here's an orange mark. And then here's two more. And these two will be for your phasers at the top. On each of your phasers, there'll be a, a little dot, but I can show you on this diagram here. On the diagram, we'll have a dot on the phaser and then a dot on the chain, and that's where you're gonna line up your chain. And then down here on the crank, there's gonna be two lines. It's really tough to see, but I can show you here. There'll be two lines right here. There'll be one there and one there, and that's where your, uh, your left and your right bank chains will go.
All right, so now we got all the chains back on and everything's looking good, but we just wanna triple check and make sure that everything's lining up with all the marks. And then once everything's all lined up, we're gonna pull the pins out of the tensioners and then everything should be set. But I will say is uh, good luck trying to hold this can. They like to jump around. I had to get creative using my ratchet to hold it in place while I set it up. And now the chain should be able to just stay there. Like I could probably take this off now. There we go. Now the torque specs should be all on the screen for you. I made a nice diagram for everybody to see so you don't have to go looking for it for yourself. All right, so now we're just getting ready to do our first startup from where we left off. We got the rod in and then we got all the accessories and I put the belt on. And we haven't hooked up coolant or anything yet just because I want to make sure that it runs good before we put coolant in it. And with that, Stefan, if you want to start it up, So it's running just fine. Yeah, it's running good. That's a good sign. All right, one quick tip. I want to remind you guys that we need to vacuum bleed the turbo system as well. Because if we don't do that, then we're going to get engine codes and it's not going to be a fun time. So just always make sure that you're vacuum bleeding it and you'll be good to go. So with this car, we have three reservoirs here, right? So this one is the reservoir for the engine and this one goes straight to the turbos. So we have to vacuum bleed this reservoir in order to have the turbos all bled properly. 